morning. It's Monday, June 8th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Kicking the Hornet's Nest, in our scripture, Psalm 29. Honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord for his glory and strength. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf. He makes Mount Hermon leap like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. The last thing in the world I would ever do is intentionally kick a hornet's nest. The key word is intentionally. I did that once with yellow jackets nesting in a dead hollow branch of an oak tree. I was a teenager helping my dad in the yard. The dead limb was huge and hanging over where my brother parked his car. The little black and yellow dive demons objected to my sawing off the limb that contained their living quarters. They were very unhappy, and I spent two days in the hospital. The whole point here is that you do not poke what can poke back much harder than you can take. If you read David's psalm objectively, the characterizations of God's power are bigger than any poke you can handle. Consider, God's glory thunders over the sea, which is pretty thunderous itself. God's answers split the gigantic cedars like twigs. God's power makes the mountains shudder and jump like young oxen. In short, who would want to mess with a God like that? Yet, it is very common in our day to see the cavalier arrogance many people have about God. That kind of thinking survives only so long as God's patience. If you've ever watched a petulant child get angry at his parent, you get this idea. The child isn't getting what he wants, so he threatens to run away or tries to hit the parent. The parent responds with a smile or a shrug or a calm rebuke. The child ramps up his onslaught louder, angrier, promising the parent will be sorry. He's pushing the envelope and he doesn't understand that with which he's trifling. His parent's patience is about to result in something akin to what I experienced in that oak tree more than you ever bargained for. This is a picture of God, our Creator, and the petulance of humans who refuse to even acknowledge the sovereign of the universe. God's patience is incredible, much more than mine, but God's patience is not limitless. He allows us much freedom to find our way, but we are ultimately responsible to come to Him on bended knee. Consider Philippians chapter 2. Paul writes, Therefore God elevated him, meaning Jesus, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Let's pray together. Father, your word is clear. Our responsibility is to choose to love you with all our hearts, minds, soul, and strength. And when we do that, our hearts find peace. Help us today to choose well. For you today, you can probably recall much of the same experience I had as a child. I knew if mom or dad used all three of my names, calling out Russell J. Brownworth, the patient's zone had appeared in the rearview mirror. The hammer was about to fall. God also has a place like that. Best not to kick that hornet's nest. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.